Hello, I am William Elliott. I am founder of the company WJE Tech. Initially funded by Corfo with the backing of the Chilean Space Association. I was interviewed for the World Space Week 2022. As the interview was in Spanish, I am going to give you a short translation of said interview. The theme of the interview was cleaning space without contamination. Really, cleaning space without additional contamination. The problem with space junk. What is space junk? We have gotten very used to having a cloud of satellites in our near earth orbit which serve us for communication weather internet etc if a satellite needs to change its position it must use fuel if a satellite runs out of fuel it can no longer change its position and it is transformed into a dangerous piece of space junk There are almost 20,000 dead satellites and other dirt in near earth orbit that are a danger to other satellites. Presently, if we need to remove a piece of space junk, we have to send another sat a rescue satellite or space tug into orbit. In doing so, we burn approximately 12 tons or more of fuel. The rescue satellite has to carry its own fuel in order to maneuver to find the space junk and capture it. As the rescue satellite can only carry a limited amount of fuel, it will very soon run out of fuel and it will itself turn into another piece of space junk. When the fuel runs out, the spacecraft is transformed into space junk. This is where our technology comes into use. We have a method of space propulsion that does not use fuel. We can push a satellite from the inside and never run out of fuel. Illustrated is a first generation of autonomous space tugs that use the Elliot thrusters so as to never need refueling and can therefore continue its mission almost indefinitely. This is how it works. We have a spaceship in orbit that we need to push. Nowadays, if we need to push a spacecraft, we need a rocket, fuel and electricity. We burn the fuel generating hot gases in the rocket motor that push the spacecraft. The problem is that as we are pushing, we are consuming fuel and very soon the spacecraft will run out of fuel and turn into space junk. Our method does not use neither fuel nor the rocket engine. Our method only uses electricity to push from the inside and and as how in orbit there is plenty of sunshine the power supply can be refreshed with solar cells and we can move almost indefinitely how does it work it's very simple it is simply a closed container with two forces two equal forces pushing against each other One of the forces is composed by solid or bound molecules and the other force is composed of unbound molecules, in other words, a gas. The airtight cylinder contains air. In other words, there are billions and billions of fast moving molecules that are constantly colliding with each other and with the inner surface of the cylinder. They push every square inch of the cylinder with 14 pounds. That is a lot of force, but as if the force is equal in every direction, there is naturally no movement. We destroy the symmetry of forces inside the cylinder 
with a propeller. The force the propeller receives has a tendency to push the cylinder forward. The gas molecules that have collided with the propeller are thrown towards the rear of the cylinder. If they were to reach the rear of the cylinder and molest it, they would hit the rear of the cylinder with the same force as the forward force of the propeller and the cylinder would not go anywhere. But as on their way to the rear of the cylinder, they collide with billions and billions of molecules that randomize the vector momentum of the travel and the centrifugal force caused by propeller creates a vortex of molecules that push against the edge of the cylinder. The result is a net forward force. But does it work? Can a closed airtight container with a propeller inside actually push itself? You can test it yourself with a simple do-it-yourself experiment. All you need is a 6-liter water bottle, a high-revolution electric motor, a propeller from a computer power source, and a 12-volt battery. We set up the experiment following the instructions on the web page Arduino Space Drive. We wait for the model not to move, not to shake. We must make sure that the bottle is completely airtight. Then we turn it on. As you can see, the bottle has no problem pushing itself from the inside. The effect is not caused by the torque of the rotating engine. This we can prove with another experiment. Now, there have been a few persons that have told me that the experiment is too simple to challenge traditional physics uh, theories. But remember what this guy said. Now I'm going to discuss how we would look for a new law. In general, we look for a new law by the following process. First, we guess it. <laughs> then we com... Well, don't laugh. That's what's really true. Then we compute the consequences of the guess to see what, if this is right, if this law that we guess is right, we see what it would imply. And then we compare those computation results to nature or we say compared to experiment or experience, compare it directly with observation to see if it, if it works. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. And that simple statement is the key to science. It doesn't make a difference how beautiful your guess is, it doesn't make a difference how smart you are who made the guess, or what his name is, if it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. That's all there is to it. 